Earlier this year, in March 2024, Mario Nito captivated the music production community with the release of Harmony Bloom, a groundbreaking MIDI generator that seamlessly merged polyrhythmic patterns with stunning visuals. This innovative tool allowed musicians to send MIDI data to any compatible device, unlocking a vast array of musical possibilities. Now, as we approach the end of the year, Mario Nito is set to elevate our creative journeys once again with his latest offering, Chord Generator. Building upon the success of Harmony Bloom, Chord Generator is designed to effortlessly create magical sequences while allowing users to infuse their own personal touch. It offers numerous parameters for customization or randomization, enabling producers to achieve their desired results with ease. With Chord Generator, Mario continues to push the boundaries of music creation, providing a tool that not only inspires creativity, but also enhances workflow efficiency. Whether you're crafting intricate chord progressions or seeking fresh harmonic ideas, Chord Generator is poised to become an indispensable asset in your production arsenal. Before we dive into the features and capabilities of Chord Generator, don't forget to smash that like button and subscribe to this channel if you haven't already. Now, let's explore the innovative world of Chord Generator and see how it can transform your music production experience. All right, so here we are in Ableton Live 12. Welcome back, and in today's video, we are gonna be taking a look at Chord Generator, the new chord sequencing plugin from Mario Nito. I've got a little jam in Chord Generator. Check this out. Oh yeah. <laughs> a little something I came up with before the video. As you can see, Chord Generator putting in some work here. Being actually randomized by stepping, which is kind of an interesting thing. I'll show you guys how to do that in just a second. So Stepic here is driving Chord Generator with a group of random chords, just the first four notes in the chromatic scale. Anyway, we'll come back to that in a second. But yeah, this is Chord Generator, and as you can see, it's kind of just doing its thing. Got a little drum and bass loop over here. But yeah, today's video, we're gonna go over all the controls, and so you guys can see exactly how to use this thing. Uh, it's a wonderful companion to uh, Harmony Bloom, which was his first plugin. So uh, on the other side of this, we are going to go over all the controls, and I'll show you guys some use cases for it so you guys can get the most out of this amazing plugin. Let's check it out. Okay, so this is Chord Generator. Now, first things first, Chord Generator is a MIDI plugin. Uh, it has its MIDI sent through other plugins on your DAW, such as the case with Harmony Bloom or any other sequencer. So that being said, uh, you can see here that I've got Chord Generator on its own separate track. It's record enabled, and I'm sending that MIDI through another track. The monitor is set to in here, and this is just a simple instance of contact eight. Uh, playing Alicia's keys. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and play some notes here on my push and you can hear We're getting some chords Very cool. Okay, so chord generator has three separate sections We have the selected chord editor here at the top We have the pad section here in the middle and down here at the bottom We have what we call the global area. So when I play a, a note on my keyboard or push we get a different pad lighting up, indicating that we're playing a different chord, okay? Now, you can change these chords to whatever you want up here at the top. So this pad corresponds to this chord here. I could change this to say a minor nine. And we're getting a minor nine chord. We'll play, say, a diminished nine. Very interesting stuff. As you can see, there's a huge selection of chords here, right? We'll go back to major nine. But I want you guys to be aware that you're only limited to 12 pads in non-single mode because 12 pads, is all we got here in the middle, right? As you can see here down here at the global area, we got 12 different pads lighting up when I play. You can map these to whatever you want up here at the top right with the map button, but I just want you to make you guys aware that you only have 12 possible selections here. But if you turn on single mode, now uh, you can see that this pad is selected here. Now I can play any key on my keyboard, no matter how high or low, and I'm getting a major nine chord. Again, you could change this to say a minor nine chord. I'll get a minor nine chord up here, all the way up here. All right, so that's single mode, which could be really cool and give you some different results. Okay, let's go back to the main mode here. So now, uh, as you guys know, music theory is based on this whole idea of intervals, right? Mario himself told me that 
this chord generator is designed to actually break chords, meaning that if you're playing chromatic, you're gonna get a minor chord, right? Let's go back to, say, the major nine, right? You're getting a major nine chord. But if I change the scale to anything other than chromatic, then you're now breaking the actual chord itself. So I'm gonna put this on C minor, and now this major nine chord no longer sounds like a major nine because it's being filtered through C minor. I just wanna make that clear. So if I go ahead and randomize all these pads with this magic wand button, now we're getting a whole different set of chords that may or may not be what they say they are because we're no longer playing in chromatic, but it's kinda of cool anyway, right? That's the way it was designed. Interesting stuff. Okay, cool. So now let's talk about this top area here at the top. I'm gonna to reset this. Now we have the selected chord editor here. Now what this does is you have inversion. So I'm playing this pad. And again, this corresponds to whatever pad is selected here. So you can see that I can invert some of these intervals here, get a really nice major nine chord happening. Ooh, love that. You can set the velocity to whatever you want. You can randomize that velocity, very cool. Now, what's even cooler is we have the strum and repeater sections over here. What is strum and repeater? Well, first of all, you have to unlock them in order to use them. So this button right here unlocks it. Now, strum is exactly what it says it is. So strum on a guitar means you're gonna move your pick down the strings or you're gonna you know, lay your fingers on the keyboard. You have this actual little knob right here, which allows you to kind of ease into it, which is really nice. This button over here allows you to quantize the values, which is very cool. Now it doesn't have to just be like, you know, a linear fashion. You can go backwards. You can randomize this to whatever you want. Let's go ahead and randomize it. Very cool. Go ahead and randomize all of them. You can set them to whatever you want. Interval, you can go all the way up to 16 bars, which is really cool. Like that's crazy to me. Like. So you can imagine how cool this would be for like generative material. Let's go ahead and add some delay to Alicia's keys. Oh yeah, that's so nice. I love that, right? So that's the strum feature. Uh, you guys can reset this if you want. You can lock it again. Um, you can randomize individual sections of it. It's really cool. Um, so now we have a repeater over here on the right. Now to activate the repeater, you hit the power button. And then what you can do is you can randomize each individual uh, note here, or you can randomize the whole thing, right? So this is based on these values here. Again, these can be quantized or unquantized. Um, so for example, let's go ahead and put the low note on a slow repeat, and we'll go ahead and just kind of dial this in here. Maybe we'll have this be on a quarter, and this will be on an eighth. And we're gonna get some really interesting rhythm here based on this whole idea of repetitions, right? Again, you can randomize this if you want. And that may be really interesting. I mean, if you're just doing like a composition or something, but this is per pad basis. Again, strum and repeater is per pad. So, you know, your mileage may vary, but it can be really cool. So let's go ahead and change the chord here to like, I don't know, minor nine. We'll change the scale to minor nine. Oh yeah, we'll lower our BPM. Oh, now we're talking. I like that. Oh yeah. Oh, that's smooth. Nice. Excellent. A couple more notes about the controls before we move on to use cases. So up here at the top, we have a button called gospel mode, which adds a higher octave touch to your chords. Go ahead and turn this on and hear what it sounds like. Right, turn it off, you can hear the difference. Oh yeah, it's very subtle, but it works really, really well. Um, to the right of that, we have some randomization controls. So this button selects a random uh, chord type every time you press it, right? But to the right of that, we have a button that allows you to select a new chord every time you press a pad. So if you turn this on, we're gonna get a new chord every single time, right? Now where I found this works really well though, is with scale filtering turned on. So right now we're in chromatic mode, but if you change this to say minor, you get some really nice chord variations here with not too much work. And this can be a great way to build your entire palette of chords, if you will, um, just by using this button. So I can go ahead and turn this off now. We'll come over to the next pad and we'll turn it on. Right, and then we can turn it off again. And now we have two chords here 
you know, that can be the beginning of our track. So you can build your entire chord library, if you will. Now, speaking of chord library, if you click on the chord name itself, you can see that we have some omission controls here. And when you turn these on or turn these off, that automatically adds them to the pool of chords that are being selected here. So say if you don't want the augmented and diminished chords, you can go ahead and turn these off. Now, it'd be really nice to see if Mario added like hold shift and you can select a whole group at a time. But I want to remind you that this is chord generator 1.0. Uh, some of you may remember what Harmony Bloom 1.0 looked like. I'm going to go ahead and put an image on the screen of Harmony Bloom 1.0. And you know, Mario is constantly developing his product. So if you have like a feature request or you wanna, you know, maybe suggest something to him, go ahead and join his Discord. He's totally open to suggestions. So I highly encourage you guys to reach out. Okay, so um, a couple more things here. We have some interface controls here at the top. We have a complete reset button. This is the knit state button. We have a bypass button. Um, you can save your presets. There's a bunch of presets that you guys are gonna get in there. We have undo and redo controls. We have interface controls where you can change the actual color of it. A lot of people ask me, how do I get a pink Harmony Bloom? Well, it's exactly like this. You just click on the paintbrush and you can adjust the controls right here and adjust your custom skin. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. Last but not least here, we do have MIDI capture as well as save to file and drag and drop. So that's really great to see. All you do is you turn on MIDI capture, you go ahead and press play in your DAW and then you can play something. Right? Turn off MIDI capture and now you have the option to save this as a file or you can drag this and drop this in your DAW or any other location where you can save the MIDI such as your desktop or another program. So that's really great to see. It makes it super easy to generate a chord progression and then capture the MIDI and then drag and drop that into your track. Okay, now let's move on to my top tips on how to use Chord Generator. Okay, so to wrap this up, I'm gonna give you an example of how I would use Chord Generator in a track. So I've got Chord Generator here in its default initialized state. We're gonna come back to this in just a second. I'm sending that MIDI through an instance of Omnisphere 2 with a pad from Echo Season, and I've got Harmony Bloom here doing its thing. I'm sending that through an instance of Hive 2, and it's just got a simple pluck here. I've got a bass here from Serum, and finally I have an instance of Stepic running through Vital with a simple sequence. Now, back to Chord Generator. What you can do here is randomize the chords by clicking on the magic wand button, and this gives you a random selection. That's cool, all right? Now, what I'm also gonna do is change the scale filtering from chromatic to minor, because I'm playing in C minor here. Now, fans of the channel know I love Stepic, right? So I always find new ways to use Stepic. Now, what you can do is drag Stepic onto the same track. Again, I'm using the Max or Live version. If you're using a VST, just send uh, the MIDI from Stepic into Chord Generator. Anyway, so I'll open up Stepic, and what we're gonna do here is move the root note from C3 to C4. So we'll use that as our root note here. And then we're gonna leave it on chromatic. Now what I'm gonna do is change the note length from one over 16 to custom, okay? And I'll choose say two over one, giving us a two bar length for all of our notes. All right, so now what I'm gonna do is hold shift here and just drag my mouse across. And you can see that I'm selecting all of the notes in the chromatic scale here. Go ahead and repeat that on the end. Very good. And now the most important thing is I'm going to change the dice mode from gray to purple, meaning it's not going to give me the same note twice. Okay, so uh, pro tip for you if you wanna do this with percussion, it also works well, just change the note length. Okay, so that being said, now what I'm gonna do is just hit play here and Stepic is gonna give us a random note on any one of these 12 pads every single time, every two bars, because that's the way we set it up. Check this out. Oh yeah. Oh, very nice. So as you can see, Stepic is randomly choosing a new chord every time based on its note selection. And again, this is chromatic, right? That's really nice. So every two bars, it's gonna switch. I love that. Because what this does, it gives you a way to just sort of let the chords evolve over time. Again, you could make that say four over one or eight over one, doesn't matter. Put this on gospel mode. <laughs> Very nice. So as you can see, Chord Generator can be a really effective way to build atmosphere in your track, you know, add different chord progressions. I mean, we didn't even start using the repeater here in this example, but I mean, there's so many different use cases. So I highly encourage you guys to experiment and check this plugin out. Again, I want to thank Mario for sponsoring this video. 
Um, it's been really fun. I really hope that Core Generator keeps evolving and it keeps improving it. And I'm super excited about the future here. So anyway, enjoy this one, you guys. <laughs> Thanks again for watching. I truly appreciate it. And uh, yeah, link is down below in the description for Core Generator. And uh, I'll be back again soon with more plug-in deep dives and AMP tutorials just like this one. In the meantime, take good care, you guys. And as always, keep your heads in the clouds and your feet planted firmly on the ground. My name is Chris from Signs of Life. We'll see you guys in the next video.